When the Holocaust returned, it came denouncing anti-Semitism and wearing a Star of David. It was never going to look how we were expecting. It wasn't going to show up in its old familiar costume with the bent cross and the tiny mustache, blaming all the problems on the Jews. It had to look different. If it didn't look different, we never would have let it in the door. And that's still what's throwing a lot of people off. It looks different. It doesn't look like what all the World War II movies and Holocaust novels conditioned us to watch out for. In fact, it looks so different that the victims in the last story have the same religion as the antagonists in the new one. That old aphorism, history doesn't repeat itself but it often rhymes, is true because people don't tend to make the exact same mistake in the same way twice. But the conditioning which led them to make the first mistake will often lead them to make a second similar one. We've all been made far too familiar with the Nazi extermination program to ever consent to Jews being rounded up and loaded onto trains again. But we also didn't purge from our civilization all the murderousness, hatred, and tyranny which made it possible. That's why this new Holocaust has been allowed to happen. We've all been conditioned to watch out for the next Hitler, but there's never going to be another Hitler. We've been so focused on looking out for the Hitler who never comes that many of us missed when we started singing verses that rhyme with the ones we were hearing in Germany eight decades ago. People assume what's happening in Gaza can't be an actual genocide because the news media keeps assuring everyone that's not what we're looking at, and so do the politicians in both parties. This can't possibly be what it looks like, people say. If it was, we would have heard about it in the news. The villains in this new story don't look like the villains in the old story, and if you are a properly indoctrinated Westerner, they might not look like villains at all. They might just look like Jews defending themselves from terrorists and Western governments rightly defending their dear ally, which is exactly what they should do if they want to prevent another Holocaust. But it's that very misperception which is making today's Holocaust possible. This mass atrocity is being tolerated by huge parts of the population exactly because we see it as intolerable for large numbers of Jews to be killed by those who hate them, not understanding that the people who were killed on October 7th were killed not because of their religion, but because they were part of a settler colonialist project which is premised on the perpetual abuse of a pre-existing indigenous population. People defend Israel's actions on the grounds that Israel has reasons for doing things the way it's doing them. They have to bomb Gaza. They suffered an unprovoked attack from a bunch of evil terrorists. They have to bomb all the hospitals and schools and mosques. That's where Hamas are hiding. They have to bomb areas that are packed full of children. Hamas are using those children as human shields. But those who commit mass atrocities always justify their actions. They always have reasons for doing them. They always frame it as a necessary act of self-preservation. That was always what the next Holocaust was going to look like. It was never going to feature new bad guys who cackle and twist their mustaches saying, Ha ha, we are evil! Let's kill a bunch of people because we are evil! They were always going to frame themselves as the heroes and victims, and the other side as the villains and victimizers. They were always going to offer a bunch of reasons why what they're doing is actually good and righteous, even though it looks evil on its face. If we are to prevent genocidal atrocities, we need to be able to recognize what's happening in real time, and we can't do that if we're expecting them to show up in familiar and instantly recognizable packaging. We need to be able to see through the manipulations and justifications in the here and now so that we can stop it in its tracks, instead of waiting for history to judge it in our rear-view mirror after it's already happened. This is important to recognize when it comes to saving Gaza, and it's important to recognize when it comes to preventing the holocausts of the future as well. They will never look identical to the holocausts of the past. Their form will be unprecedented, and they will have different justifications for their orchestration. 
they will rhyme. And we need to be able to pick up on that as it happens. <laughs>